Hi, let me show you something. Today we're going to look at how to use the Korg SQ1 sequencer to control and sequence your Eurorack modular synthesizer. The SQ1 is a pretty awesome little box. It only costs $99 and it can be battery powered. That means for the cost of most decent sequencers, you can get multiple SQ1s. It won't take up space in your rack and you don't need an extra power outlet to power it. So let's start making some noise with the SQ-1 and see just a basic glimpse of the possibilities. In order to get really accurate or reliable clocking, the best thing I've found is to use another clock source as a master and simply have the SQ1 slave to that clock source. So right now, 120 BPM coming out of the data. You'll notice that I tap along with the beat, but the tempo knob is blinking at twice the rate. This is the default behavior of the SQ-1. It wants to basically play eighth notes when it's slaved to a master clock. I looked through the manual and there wasn't really a way to overcome this. Sometimes you might want to play with the actual beat. The manual says that if you hold down, play, hit power, you can use these three options to select between quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth note resolutions. When you're running this as the master clock, that basically determines the range of tempos you have with the tempo knob. When you're running this synced to an external clock, it basically always plays eighth notes, which can be kind of frustrating. One thing I've realized just from experimenting with it is that if you keep turning the knob and you get to any of these options where two of the lights are blinking, any of these three options, you basically reset it to quarter note mode when it's paired with an external clock. So if you want to slow it down a little, or if you're using multiples and you want one to be quarter notes, one to be eighth notes, or whatever resolution you're dealing with, you can do that by just resetting the mode. In this case, I want it to be in eighth note mode. So I'm going to go ahead and set that again. Now we're taking the gate for any step that's on, sending a message to the ADSR, and the CV is controlling the pitch on the Dixie. The CV is all adjustable by these knobs for each step. So we have a pretty basic sequence going. One interesting thing to note is when you're in either of these first two modes that use both lanes A and B, one alternates, one just goes through them linearly, the, a, the B channel outputs are basically molted versions of the A channel outputs. So you can do some pretty cool stuff with that. You basically get two copies of the signal without having to use the bolt in the rack. Now I'm sending the channel B or lane B CV signal to the high pass cutoff on my filter. Always keep in mind that CV is CV, right? We don't need to use these CVs for pitch. You can use them for anything that can be controlled. That makes this a really great sequencer for motion. We can do sweeps up or down. It's not as fluid or smooth as using an LFO, but it also lets you do things that an LFO might not be able to, like jump up and down between steps. So if I play my sequence again, then start adding in. Now whatever amount of CV I'm sending out here, 
is just affecting the high pass cutoff on my filter to give me a slightly different timbre as I go through the sequence. One of the nice things in this split lane mode is that you can individually control the parameters for the CV. For example, on lane A, the pitch is only a one volt range. So I'm basically dealing with a one octave range and I have it quantized to a minor scale. For the B lane, which I'm not using for pitch, I have it set to five volt range. That gives me a little better range when I'm dealing with an actual CV parameter, like in this case, the high pass cutoff. And I have it set to a linear scale. So it's not gonna try and quantize it based on a musical scale. It's just gonna send the voltage as is. Now we still have our gate output on lane B. Let's make use of that. I'm gonna plug lane B into another envelope. From that envelope, I'm gonna send the output to high pass resonance on my filter. Let's see what happens. Awesome. So, a pretty tiny and cheap box. Just by doing some creative patching, we can get some really cool sounds out of this. Really recommend this as a sequencer. It's pretty awesome. It does some really cool stuff, and it's really like anything else in this format, just limited by your imagination. So I hope that video was helpful. We're going to do some future videos that delve into some more advanced topics with the SQ1. In the meantime, if there's anything you'd like to see about the SQ1 and the Eurorack modular integration and system, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.